All right, you guys, so please grab a sheet of paper and a pencil because I'm gonna be dropping knowledge like it's hot. That sounded so lame. But seriously, you know I talk fast and, and you know I just don't like, I'm just cut to the chase. So grab your pencil and your paper. I'm gonna give you three seconds. That was longer than the three probably. Okay, so I'm gonna tell you a little bit about me and we just jump into this. So I came out of college. I got my first job out of college. Um, I got a degree in finance and I've been working in finance for about five to six years. With that being said, I recently just changed my career and I am now working like in healthcare slash tech. And that's mind blowing because it's like, hey, your job titles and things weren't really too much aligning with that. They were, but it wouldn't look like that initially on paper. So I'm gonna just tell you what I did. I'm gonna give you five steps, just five. So let's just jump into number one. First of all, I need you to go update your LinkedIn. I know what you're thinking. And someone told me this and I was like, nah, y'all tripping. I ain't got time for that. Anybody on LinkedIn? Yes, they are. That's where all the jobs are. I tried to go back to like career builder and all this other stuff. No, that's not where the jobs are. They are constantly posting on LinkedIn. And I won't let you know, like I just had like me and my whole friend group, my girl group just got put on. Like we all just recently got jobs within like the last four to five months, like new jobs, like amazing jobs. Like I'm talking about big companies that my friends are working at right now. I'm so proud of them, myself included. With that being said, please go into your LinkedIn and A, update your photo. I don't care if you ain't got time, you ain't got no friends, you ain't got no photo. If you don't go buy a tripod and just update your photo, like seriously, literally, ooh, just update it. I ain't gonna say it again. Update your actual profile. And this is what you do. Go look at other people's stuff. Literally, it's right there. Look at other people's stuff, go on Google, find a good little statement to write, get with a friend if you need to, and just be like, you know, don't be like seeking employment somewhere. No, be like, you know, first of all, talk in third person, you know, Shayla is a very qualified individual who's done bop, bop, bop. Keep it real short, three things. She's done bop, bop, bop. She's looking to branch out into X, Y, Z. She's utilized the skills that she previously mentioned up above, and those skills have given her the ability to get XYZ percentages for the company. It's given her the ability to grow and to learn how to, I don't know, work cross-functionally across teams. I don't know. But you can find someone who has the job title that you do want and kind of mimic and see what they have. Don't copy, mimic, okay? And then also update your skills. Just make sure your LinkedIn looks clean. Put a little background picture, put a little time in it. And when it comes to actually applying for jobs, this is like a subset of that, search on LinkedIn. Go into the job section, type in the title, type in remote, type in whatever, search through LinkedIn. And when you see a job, you need to be applying within the first 24 hours to 48 hours. 24 to 48 hours because jobs are going so fast. Like I would have something and I'd be like, okay, I'm gonna apply like on Wednesday. It'll be Sunday or Monday. It's gone, it's filled. But there's also the factor that sometimes when you put in a job to LinkedIn, they put a time frame with that, LinkedIn does. And so if the recruiter doesn't come back and like renew it or something, then it automatically says like the job is like not available anymore and you can go on the company website. So I always recommend go on LinkedIn, look at the job roles there, then actually go to the company website and apply again on for different roles or the role, not the role that you already applied on on LinkedIn, but apply again on that company website. All right, that's it. Number two, job scan is an app. JobScan is an app that my friend put me on. So what happens is in JobScan, you put in your resume and on the second portion, you go ahead and you put in the job description of the actual job. I'm talking about from the website. When you go, it's like, this is what the job entails. This is who you're working. These are the details, the requirements. Copy and paste that into JobScan. After you paste it into JobScan, it's going to do a side-by-side -side comparison because as you know, most companies, the recruiters, your resume gets sent through a system first and then if it hits these marks, then it gets pushed to the recruiter. Typically, that's kind of how it works it's at big companies, at least. So in the job skin, it's going to give you little percentages by one another. It's going to say like, oh, you have a 30% match or something compared to this job. And it will list out why. It will say this role mentioned management five times. You mentioned management one in your resume. This role mentioned, you know, these skills. You never mentioned these skills. These were this company has it worded like this. You don't have it worded like that. It's very, very helpful. And it gives you suggestions. And I think it's I think it's really cheap. I know that the first couple times it's free. So try it out, see if you like it. But it helped me to see 
the wording that certain companies use. And with that, we're going to go into number three, which is your resume. Your resume should be constantly updated for pretty much every role that you're doing. Not, and I know that sounds like a lot, but it's not. Just tweak a few things. If you see this job role mentions, you know, um, that you, like I said, working cross-functionally or that you have skills in Excel, then mention that directly in your resume if it wasn't mentioned before. So I would always tweak my resumes just a little bit. And what helped me with organization is I would put a dash or like a, a hyphen or whatever and put the company name so I know I'm sending out the right resume, right? Your resume needs to have transferable skills. Say it with me now, transferable skills. And that's how I got into many of the roles that I've ever done. Transferable skills are things that you've already done that can transfer over into the new role, essentially. So you need to, I know you're going to be like, oh, I don't have experience in this or I've never done that. I, I've never made this. I've never looked at, made a pivot table or something like that. Yes, you may not have made a pivot table, but you have analyzed data at some type of point, right? Say that. Say I've analyzed data and that can be, you know, something that can be transferred into the new role. It might not di directly correlate, but you still have learned those skills in a different way. And we can go deeper and dive into that, but that's what I'm gonna say with your resume. You need to make sure that you have action words too. You know, don't just be like, um, sat at desk and, you know, took notes a lot uh, throughout for meetings. No, be like, that made me get out the laptop trying to help y'all. I was trying to keep from doing this. But when you go on Google, you can type in the job role that you have currently or where you wanna go and see the differences that they have when it comes to writing your resume and kind of what you should have and the skills and how it should be written. Because most of the time you have the skills, you just don't know how to write it right. And people will be like, oh, go pay somebody. And maybe you can for the first time, but honestly, you can do this on your own unless you need a lot of help. You know, so don't just be like, you know, made meetings, you know, I coordinated meetings, you know, and appointments and travel arrangements for uh, upper management, you know, not my manager, for upper management, you know what I'm saying? Um, different stakeholders, you know, don't say, you know, um, made purchases for the office or something. No, I routinely tracked and purchased and maintained the office supplies, something like that. That's for someone who would be like an administrative assistant. There's different ways in words and terms that you need to use so that you actively did something. Next is going to number four, referrals. And people don't like to talk about this, but I'm going to talk about it. A referral will get you a long way. If you have your resume written in a nice way and you have that referral, some companies will not even take people if they ain't really coming with referrals. I'm going to be real. Some of the big tech companies and things like that. If you know someone, just reach out and ask them. I don't even care if you know them a little bit. Be like, hey, shoot them a message. Shoot them on LinkedIn, Instagram, Facebook, whatever. Be like, hey, you know, I want to apply for X, Y, Z. Can you look and see if that role is available? You know, um, here's my resume or something. You know, do you think I could put you down for a referral? It never hurts to ask. You are hurting yourself by not asking and being like, oh, I don't know if they remember me. Or, oh, no, 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 no. No. Ask them. See, like, hey, can you look at this role for me? You know, and that will get you further than sitting there thinking that they ain't going to help you. Um, Number five. Just apply. Apply to everything, even if it don't seem like you're qualified. And I have people tell me like, oh, are you really qualified to be applying for that? Like what you, you know, you got experience in X, Y, and Z, or, you know, that job seemed like it's asking, like that's a lot of money. You think they're going to pay you that? Ignore those people. You know, sometimes people, uh, they may be saying it from a warm, some of them are haters. And some of them may be saying it from a very warm heart. But at the end of the day, it never hurts to apply because many of people get into roles where they have no experience and they end up making a ton of money and they learn it on the way. For your role, you will learn on the way for the very most part of it, most part of it, for the most part. So go ahead and apply. Apply to everything, but still stuff you want to do. Don't just be like, oh, I'm just applying, you know, to um, do shipments and you don't want to work in a warehouse and nothing like that. No, apply to roles that may seem like they're a little bit further of a reach, but you can still get them because honestly, half of the battle is personality. That's what it really comes down to. And we can go in more into that if you guys want more details on how to actually do interviews and phone tips and stuff like that. But a big chunk of it, depending on what it is, depending on if it's something, you know, it could be something analytical, data or whatever, you can get there. You just got to get this stuff down first. And then we'll work on the next portion because that's kind of like, do they really like you? The next thing I'm going to mention is really big recruiter. It's six. I lied. It's not six. It's not five or six. Um, go on LinkedIn and you can even type in recruiter 
or go to that company and type in recruiter, or even the people that come in your DMs. They may come in your DMs saying like, hey, I'm a recruiter, do you wanna do this role? That might not be the role you want. Reach back out to them and be like, oh, I'm not really looking for that role, but do you have something that is more so along the lines of X, Y, Z? That's what I did. You can reach out to recruiters that have reached out to you like years ago. And at first I didn't know that you could. I was like, oh, isn't that weird? It's not weird. If they still a recruiter, they still looking. And I had a recruiter get on the phone with me. She's like, hey, let's chit chat a little bit, see what you're looking for, if I have anything that's aligned with that. And she did. Recruiters make it easier for you because my recruiter at that point was just sending me jobs and I was like, yay, nay, yay, nay. And she'd set up everything. A recruiter has always been the best way to go. Um, so I would say utilize that. Search for one if you can't. Respond back to the people who were messaging you in LinkedIn. And you don't even have to be too active on LinkedIn. You know, you can just sit there and just, I don't, I don't be commenting and all that stuff. I don't do that. But I make sure that everything looks very clean. And so that's how you'll be able to get an advantage, making sure everything looks clean and streamlined. So I hope these tips helped. I can go into more detail if needed, but I just wanted to share with you a part of the process that happened with me, how I was able to pivot careers and go into areas that seem very, very hard. Um, and I can tell you more in detail about all of those things if you want to know more, um, but it's definitely possible. So thanks for tuning in and keep watching more videos.